I think sometimes you can use knowledge from one field in other fields. So today I'm going to teach you some basic computer maintenance stuff that you can use while you're not at the computer. All right, first things first, the basic computer tip that every person who's helped fix computers knows is if something's going wrong, have you tried turning it off and on again? Usually when you're on a computer and you have a little glitch or things are not working the way you want it to work, maybe you can't open files right now, or maybe the search bar isn't working properly. Sometimes all you need is to reset the computer. Now you can't really reset a human being, but you can take a nap just a small power nap and you'll probably get a lot of what's wrong with you fixed. If your computer's on fire, it's not going to be fixed by you resetting it. The same goes for you. If something really bad is happening, don't take a nap, go to the hospital. All right, number two, sometimes you just gotta let it process. If you're running a lot of programs and everything's just slowly loading, you might just have to step away and let it process. The same thing applies for human beings. What a lot of people don't understand is we are a single core system. We can really only focus on one thing at a time. And if you have a lot of stuff going on, sometimes you need to dump the stuff into the back half of your brain, your monkey part of the brain that, let's face it, is probably much faster than you think it is. It's like having to render a video. Sure, you can render it on your CPU, but it's probably better if you just dump it to the GPU. So how do you dump stuff to your GPU? Well, you gotta do some stuff while not thinking about anything. So for me, I like taking a hot shower or going for a drive or even just taking a walk. The caveat here is you have to do it without doing anything else. As in, you can't listen to music, you can't listen to audiobooks, you can't be talking to a person. You just gotta, what do the kids say nowadays? You gotta raw dog that thing. I hate, I hate that people are saying that now. It's so gross. Anyway, what you're basically doing is a form of meditation, which I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's hippy dippy stuff. And no, I was not meditating. I just stood there quietly breathing. There were no thoughts in my head whatsoever. My mind was blank. But it does work and you don't have to just sit there and not think about things if that doesn't work for you because I can't sit still and not think about things, but I can do stuff and not think about things. So find something that you can do that you can put your brain on autopilot for. I like driving. I can put my brain on autopilot, turn off everything and just drive for a while and it lets me process stuff. Find the thing that you can do that lets you just be on autopilot and really sometimes you honestly just have to walk it off. Thress. Tres, tres, un, deux, trois, trois. Oh my God, trois, three, three. Short-term fixes are short-term and they should be treated as short-term fixes. Does percussive maintenance work? Yes, but you're not actually fixing anything. You're just making it work for now. What I'm trying to say is you can do small fixes where like if your computer doesn't start unless you hit it, yes, you can just hit it every time for it to work, but you might be doing a lot of damage that you're not seeing. That's a lot of damage. If you're in a rush, it's okay to use short-term fixes, but do not rely on short-term fixes that can do a lot more damage to systems, whether it be in your life or on a computer for a long time, right? You know, we'll pull ourselves together and we'll, you know, we'll get back on crack. I mean, on track. You don't want to be the person who's known for like having your fridge open with a string or something like that. Okay, this is a major one. Backups aren't just for digital files. I Thanks, think the boss. reason why we are so much, like it's so much easier to think about backing up electronic I files is because there's so much more ephemeral, I think it's a correct word, where they're not really there. If you can touch it, you think it's gonna be there for a long time. And sure, photos in a photo album will probably last for decades or until a fire or a flood or some pests get into it. And I think it would be nice to have a few copies of your grandma's pictures around. All right, number five. <sighs> wow, I can't believe I'm doing a numbered video. Anyway, use file folders. Now, we all know a person whose desktop is just completely cluttered. 
But a really good and easy tip to do when you're on the computer is if you're saving a certain type of file, use the files that were pre-installed, right? So usually you get a videos file, a like a music file, a photos file, a documents file, and a downloads file. It's not that hard to just be like, if you're saving a document, just chuck it into the document thing. You don't have to put files, like you don't have, you don't have to subfile the files, right? Sure, it's better if you subfile the files, but if all your documents are just dumped in the big document folder, you, it's gonna be easy to find your document, right? The same goes with videos and photos. If all of the same are just dumped in the same section, it makes it a lot easier to find instead of looking through all of your computer. The same goes for regular life. I personally am a bin person, right? I chuck everything that I can into bins. Do I fold them or sort them? No. I take the stuff, I'm like, oh, this goes into this bin and this goes into that bin. See, this is my wires bin and this is my projects bin. This is where the projects that I have to like stop for a little while go into. And this is where all my wires go into. I have bins on the side here that are where my clothes are separated into. I have a bin for socks, for underwear, for pants, and for home clothes. I actually hang up my shirts because I don't like I used to put my shirts in bins, but I don't know, they get crinkly. It's like the one thing I don't really bin is the shirts because I just don't like the way wrinkled sh uh, shirts look, but everything else I chuck into bins. I have more bins behind the camera, but I, I'm, I can't move the camera right now. So that they're just gonna stay there for now. And just having the bins is super convenient. If I need a wire, I can just look in the wire thing. I need a USB. I need a DVI, I need some sort of micro USB or, um, or a laptop power charger. They're all in here, right? They're not organized, but I know where all the wires are. So I don't have to go around looking all over my house to see where the wires are. They're disorganized, but they're disorganized in the right place. It's like the least amount of effort to the most amount of gain. You don't have to put that much work in and cuts down a lot of searching time. So modifications. If you spend any time modifying stuff on your computer, you should feel comfortable modifying stuff in real life. That goes for like changing the desktop or changing the sounds that play or changing the browser that you're using. If it takes you 30 minutes to find a nice wallpaper that you like, you can spend 30 minutes modifying things that you use in your everyday life. Now, I had a hard time modifying physical things for a long time because I just kept thinking, oh, I won't be able to return it. I'm making it lose its value. But modifying it makes it technically lose value in the monetary sense, but you're making it gain value for yourself. Let's see, for example, I put tape on my screwdrivers because I used to go to work sites and a lot of my screwdrivers would have my name or just tape on them. So if I put it down somewhere, someone else couldn't claim it was their screwdriver. It's my screwdriver. A lot of my tools have my name on it. See, it's got Thomas on it. I gotta put some oil on this one. Another thing I modify, I like dark rooms when I sleep. I know it's really out there to like a dark room when you sleep. A lot of fans nowadays, they come with LEDs in them. And I hate that. So what do I do? I tape over all the LEDs that I have, right? Anything in my room that has an LED in it, I tape over. Also, another thing, this is just a side tangent, but I know it's cheaper to put in like a cheap little electronic device that controls all the switches, but I really wish we got like actual switches back. I mean, they were so much better than having like, just the sound of like turning a switch is so much nicer than having a like a little device go beep every time you click it, right? I know it's cheaper and everything, but there's something I feel like we're missing out on losing actual buttons. And also I hate LEDs, they're so bad. Anyway, you should modify things that you live with, especially if they're things you touch every day. If you lose like $10 of value, but you gain like a cent of value for yourself every day that you use it, if you're using it for more than a hundred days, you're making money back, technically. I, see, as I say that, that sort of sounds like, you know those girl math things? I guess this is like guy math. Uh, maybe it's still girl math. I don't understand the difference. 
Now, I hope you've gained at least an idea of changing something in your life from this video. You don't have to change anything, but you know, it's good to have some extra ideas in your noggin. If you like this kind of stuff where you're applying computer terms and stuff into like regular, regular life, there's this book, Algorithms to Live By. Uh, I don't know where I can put it. Okay, I'm gonna put it right there, hopefully. Thomas in the editing, put it here somewhere. But it's, it's really good. I would recommend it. Um, I really enjoyed it. There's parts about it where they talk about like caching in regular life where you put stuff where you need it. I think a lot of like my bins and stuff come from the idea of caching and stuff. So I would really recommend that book if you're any way interested in this kind of stuff. And I guess thanks for watching. Uh, there should be a video on the screen that YouTube recommends and probably like a subscribe button somewhere. I don't know. If you liked the video, just give it a like. But if you want to see more from me, maybe try sub subscribing.